Hello and welcome to the online tutorial for burning two DVDs or Blu-ray discs using Premiere Elements 4. As you must be knowing that Premiere Elements Studios version 3.0 used to support burn to DVD, but in 4.0 version they have also introduced a feature called burn to Blu-ray discs, with which you can burn your high-definition projects onto Blu-ray discs and view them on high-definition televisions with the best quality. For this, let us assume that your project is ready with all the editing done, that is the effects and transitions or themes have been added to it. Now we have to add a menu template uh, for easy navigation on the disk. So I click on the create menus option and you can see that various templates under the various themes will be listed like entertainment, general, happy birthday, these are the themes. themes. And under entertainment, you can see various templates like performance, star, night vision, etc. are displayed. Every theme has got several templates inside it. As such, there are over 100 templates in Premiere Elements. I selected performance star and press the apply button. And Premiere Elements prompts me to add menu markers for easier navigation on the disks. I press yes. There are three options by which menu markers can be added. Either at each scene, every few minutes, or total number of markers can be selected. Over here, I press OK because I want to add markers at every scene. You will see green markers appear wherever there is a scene break on the timeline. And the template will be displayed in the disk layout window. Here it is. Also, you can see that in the template, there is some text written called add your media here. Now this is the drop down feature of Premiere Elements 4. This is the area in which I can drag and drop any of my videos uh, and it will, pass, it will uh, give an impression that that video is being played inside the template. To demonstrate I press on the media tab, select the first clip and drag it over onto this add your media layer. And you can see it turns black because the thumbnail preview of my video is black. I drop the second video over here and you can see the two children uh, being displayed inside the template. If I burn this DVD onto a disk, I will see this video playing inside. Here I press the reset button because I would not like to add any video over here. And this area will appear as black. That is, this text will be hidden on the final DVD. Now I press on the share button because I want to burn my Google disks or DVD disks. What you see over here is the sharing center of Premiere Elements, which allows me to share to a desk, online, personal computer, mobile phone, or to so basically any format that I want to burn to. I press on disk because I want to burn to a DVD first to demonstrate to all the users who are watching this demonstration. You can see that Premiere Elements takes some time to detect the burners that are connected onto my system. Firstly, it will detect the DVD burners, and once it has detected those, it moves on to the next page. Here it is. Since no burner was connected to my system, you can see the status as no burners detected. Over here, you can see the option to burn to a disk. I can choose the disk name. Some test name can be given over here. Uh, the burner locations drop down is blank. Had I had more than one burner, all of them would have been displayed here. This is the presets drop down box, which allows me to choose the preset I want to export to. It defaults according to the project preset, so PAL white screen was my project and PAL white screen DVD is the export preset. This is the fit content to available space checkbox, which allows me to control the quality which I burn to. If I keep this checkbox checked, Premiere Elements 4 will decide for me what is the best quality. And if I uncheck it, I have the quality slider enabled for me and I can read the quality settings over here. From most video to the highest quality. So I choose Premiere Elements to decide the best quality for me. So now to go to disk, we have gone to folder options. Again, I can enter any folder name over here. Over here, it copies it from the disk name. I can choose the folder location from the browse button. I would like to create my DVD folder on my desktop. Similarly, I have the export preset and the fit content to available space checkboxes. 
I am for Kerika and move my fault is tied to the middle. But I feel that you know that Premier must decide the best quality for me. When I press on the button button you can see that it moves to the next page with encoding menu one of two being displayed and a current in progress display at the top. Also there is a percentage indication of the progress that many elements has made regarding the uh, burn process. It will encode the menus first and then the media and finally create a folder, a folder structure, the DVD folder structure on my desktop because that was the location that I had chosen. Also, it is important to note that this encoding process is dependent on the export piece that has been chosen. That is, the exported DVD format that will be created will be a pale white screen in, in my case because the export piece was chosen in such a way. Had it been a pal standard, it would have been a, a letterbox or a pillarbox video because my uh, the project which I have chosen is a white screen project and if I choose a standard as a standard as my export preset, my project will be pillar boxed. So the encoding program bar is almost at its completion, compiling media and it burns the folder onto my desktop. Once the burn has been completed you can see that there is a button called save as quick share that is displayed on this page. If I click on this button, I can enter the name and description for a quick share. So quick pal DVD and description as demo. That is save. Now you can see that a quick share with this name has been created. The next time I want to burn a DVD, I'll simply select this preset and press the share button and a pal white screen folder will be created, a DVD folder will be created with the PAL white screen preset. Now we want to create a Blu-ray disc. The steps are similar. I just press on the disc button, it goes onto the DVD page, then I select the Blu-ray option over here. But it is slightly different from the burn to DVD option. For example, there is no burn to folder. Unfortunately, again, I don't have a Blu-ray burner with me. And the export presets contain two mechanisms. One of them is H.264 and the other is MPEG2. And both these mechanisms have got NTSC and PAL options on them. So a total of four presets are there. Just need to press the burn button and the Blu-ray disc will be created. One important point is that Premiere Elements 4.0 contains a set of HD templates which can be identified by the HD icon at the top right corner of the thumbnail preview. These are useful especially during burn to blu discs for the best quality. These templates are available only in high definition projects. With this, we come to the end of this tutorial for burning DVDs and blu discs using Premiere Elements 4.